Welcome to My Grandpa's Train. Today on my new temporary workbench, I have a Tyco locomotive, Tyco Mantua, that I'm going to bring back to life and make it operate on my HO scale layout. This locomotive currently does not move. It doesn't even uh, get power from the trucks to the motor, so the wheels are quite dirty and they're a little bit rusty. The shell is quite dirty. It looks like it's been stored in a garage or a barn for quite some time. And uh, this one is one of the older ones that has the MU style motor. And it says Mantua Tyco underneath. It's missing uh, one truck side frame, missing the front coupler, and it's missing this handrail right here. Otherwise, it's got all of the rest of the handrails, which is nice. It's also missing both horns, which is typical, and it's missing one number board. But I have a solution for that. I happen to have this parts uh, Tyco engine, and these engines have the exact same number board numbers um, for all of the ones they're GP20s. For some reason they did it that way, which is kind of odd, but they did. So I've been using this engine to fix up other Tyco engines identical to it. Now, I'm going to take this one apart and um, we'll see what is the matter with it and why it won't move. And then I'm also going to take the shell over to the sink and scrub it real good because um, it is pretty dirty. So let's get started. Now I don't work on these particular engines very often. Um, we'll take these out first. Okay, there's our weight. That comes out nice and easy like that. So we have our wire running from the back to the front. So these actually should just snap out. So there's our rear truck came out pretty easy. Oh look, we have a screw, quite handy. This is an unusual split frame design. I've not actually worked on a GP20 that's this old before. Yeah, they certainly put a lot more pieces into these older ones. And getting the front one off should be pretty much the same thing. All right, let's pull this little bitty screw. That's gonna take the entire light assembly out. Okay, and there we have it. Our motor is now out of the shell and I can take the shell over to the sink and clean it up real good. So the real tricky part is going to be getting this motor to come to life. And I think, yeah, this is the one that's riveted together. So there's no real easy way to get that into it. Um, well, after a little bit of uh, fiddling around, I was able to get this Tyco motor to come back to life. It was um, not exactly easy. This uh, design is very compact and uh, kind of a pain to work on. So I had to remove the brush plate. That gave me access to the commutator, which I was able to clean with my fiberglass pencil. And then I removed the carbon buildup that was in the uh, gaps of the commutator. You'll notice that on this side, I have uh, the truck side frame is still in place. This side, it is gone. And um, this is where the uh, partly violent method comes into play, where um, in order to gain access to the inside of this motor, you either have to remove the truck side frames or uh, drill out these rivets, which go all the way through. And these side frames are plastic, so it's easier to pop those off. And then uh, you have access to the motor on the inside. So now I can get at it and uh, oil it and clean it and all that. The other thing is these plastic wheels have, uh, apparently it's fairly common for these wheels to split. And this one, all four of the plastic wheels are split. These two wheels need the um, traction tires installed. So I'm going to glue, put a drop of glue on these wheels to hold them together. And then I'm going to put uh, traction tires on before I put the side frame back on and for that I'm just going to use um, my plastic cement here. Alright once that's all done I'll put this back together and we'll test it. Alright well in putting this back together I actually got a little bit ahead of myself and I ran into a problem with this motor where it decided it wanted to go backwards instead of forwards and so I have it back out on the bench. Um, and I was a little confused as to why that would be. And I thought, well, maybe 
the uh, put the motor magnets in backwards from the factory where it would just do that by itself. But the engine behind it goes forwards and it's the same type of engine with the same motor. And I've had two other um, Mantua F units that one of them went backwards and one of them went forwards. And I always wondered what would have caused that. And I think it's just simply that this brush plate gets turned around um, because one side is the ground and one side is the hot side from the uh, rear truck. So by turning that around, that just changes the polarity. It doesn't have anything to do with the magnet. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna extract this screw and I already have it loose. And then I can just take this brush plate out and turn it around. Okay, the engine is finally back together and it is in good shape and it runs really well and it runs the correct direction this time now that I have the brush plate turned around the correct way. But wait, there is more. Not only did this come with an engine, I actually have the entire set of cars that go with it. We have a box car, a gondola, a flat car, and the caboose. I think the caboose is missing something, but we're going to get that all put back together. I'm going to clean up everything at the sink and then we'll run the entire train with it. So I have the Tyco Burlington locomotive put it back together as well as the complete train it came with. Now the engine and the caboose are missing still a couple detail parts like the handrail, the horns, and the uh, truck side frames. And the caboose is missing its rear coupler and um, another detail part. Other than that, the train set is complete and it runs very well. So let's take it for a spin. I'm also going to run my um, antique wood train on the inside loop just for fun. <laughs> 